Hello everybody and welcome to another expanded guide. Today we're talking about the magician Dexter Drake magic. Um, because this investigator was, uh, as far as I'm convinced, made for Bryn. Um, I'll let Bryn talk about the investigator, the stats, the cards, and everything else about it. So Bryn, take it away. All right. So we get to play purple cards and green cards, which, uh, you know, Purple cards or whatever, but green cards are sick. Uh, for our stat line here, we've got 5-2-3-2. Two, two. Uh, obviously, we need to actually use some of said purple cards in order to make our big number count. Because uh, green cards won't. We've got acceptable, like an acceptable punch score. And uh, there are a couple of ways to make use of that, but our other two numbers are pretty abysmal. Mm-hmm. There's not really too much we can do about it. Uh, the core thing about this uh, this character is his lightning bolt ability. If during your turn, you may discard an asset you control to play an asset from your hand uh, by reducing its cost by one. Wow. Only once per round, because if you could do it more than once per round, that would actually be kind of nuts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Endless <laughs> magic. Yeah, just forever. Notably, we can use this for a couple of things, uh, you know, to cycle through cheap assets with limited uses or use things that possibly accrue large amounts of doom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, then we just disappear them into a box and then cut the box in half and inside the box it's a different thing, but there's no doom on it. It's a pretty neat trick. The star effect is plus two, which by itself would be pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's better than some people get. However, you can also return an asset you control to your hand. Then if you did, you get to draw a card as well. Uh, when this is good, it's really good. When it's not, it's plus two. Yeah, it's, it's still just plus two for you a know? test. Yeah, it kind of just works. Yeah. Uh, we got six and eight health. Yeah, nothing to complain about there. Our unique cards, we got Showmanship, which, uh, like many Investigator Uniques, there are two different kinds of Dexter games, and there are the ones where you have Showmanship, and things are a little weird, but very good, and the ones where you don't, where you're just kind of playing the game. Mm -hmm. It commits for a bunch of symbols, but don't. It's <laughs> very powerful. As a reaction effect, after an asset enters play under your control, until the end of this round, you get plus two to each of your skills when resolving a triggered ability on that asset. Doesn't matter what kind of triggered ability. And not even the first time we do it. So hypothetically, you get engaged with an enemy, you lightning bolt a shriveling into play. You can fight that enemy three times at plus two with, your, with that shriveling. Mm -hmm. It's kind of sweet. It also only costs one, so if you want to cheat it in with your own ability, it's free. And our weakness, which is one of the strain, stranger ones in the game so far, I think. Uh, it costs zero to play, but you cannot play it using a play action. While it is in your hand, you get minus two to your brain. And while it is in play, you get minus one. So notably, this one affects the game without anyone ever getting to see it. Except for you. Uh, they just have to take your word for it. Yeah, there were times when I, we, were, <laughs> as we were, uh, were like, Bryn, you passed that test. And you just looked at me and like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. And I was like, oh, I get it. Your curse. You have the scraps in your hand. Yep. Uh, so what that means is that you have to use your lightning bolt ability to play it and like discard an asset to play it from your hand. However, it, it then becomes an asset that you control, so you can discard it to play your next thing. Uh, so it's not it's not so tough. As you were saying, it's one of the the weirder weaknesses, but I think it's also one of like I the I love the design on this weakness. It's it's so perfect for Dexter because <laughs> it's even like it's annoying because you do have to sacrifice an asset to get it out the first time, but you do well have that's your deck right. But then mm -hmm. it replaces that asset with another asset you get a resource reduction on. So it's like. Then it turns into somewhat of a positive while also having a negative passive effect. It's really cool. It is a really neat design. It also has the 
some slightly strange headspace that this like never actually costs you an action to mm-hmm. deal with necessarily. Yeah. Uh, like it might not. Whereas pretty much every other investigator unique weakness will cost you actions at some point. Yeah, it, it kind of it kind of pseudo costs like it, yeah. like if you look at your your investigator text as like a free action, it basically still kind of pseudo costs to yeah. quote unquote actions, but it really doesn't. It's cool. Um, so as you were saying, Bryn, with Dexter, you could build like a doom focused deck, but you also can just like get rid of like play cheap cards, get rid of cards. Whenever I'm looking at cards for Dexter, anything that's fast and cheap, <laughs> Dexter is like, yes, give me that, please. Yeah. Um, I know that I always say not to ever play the Switchblade level zero, but in Dexter, if you have a limited card pool, it might be a good choice. I mean, like it's fast. It only costs one, so it's basically like you're just making something else fast. Yeah. For the cost of a card, it's not uh, terrible. And then on the weaknesses that Travis put here, because you are playing a lot of assets, unless you're like planning to only pay cheap ones, it, this this <laughs> Dexter can be pretty pricey on resources. It's yeah. just something to be aware of. Yeah. I, this weakness is mitigated by the fact that you get to play green and purple cards and purple has some of the strongest level zero economy in the game mm-hmm. and green has some of the strongest upgraded economy in the game. So like you can probably make it work. It's going to cost you a little bit of deck space and time though. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's dive in and let's start talking about some notable cards from all of the cycles, starting with the core set. So I'll take these, uh, these four here. Um, two of them are staples and one of them has the spell tag. These tags, if this is your first time watching one of these videos, they, uh, note that you can check out in the video description, uh, a link to another YouTube video where we talk about those. The elder sign means staples. The spell means, hey, check out the spell video because they are notable spells. Um, before we get into this, with, um, in detail, there's a lot of spells and we talk about them in there, uh, with Dexter, because his stats are like as they are, uh, Bryn might say something else here, but I feel like most of the kill spells work well for Dexter because he's not like weak to his Earth Flame because of the damage. The horror is also fine because he's a mystic. Is that kind of like fair for Dexter? Yeah, yeah, like they're not they're not huge downsides to you, and also you're probably going to be playing a bunch of disposable assets. Some mm-hmm. of them might be able to take some damage for you. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, First staple here was you got Arcane Initiate. This enters with Doom and uh, helps you find spells, which is really good because then there are spells you can play. For example, maybe this Shriveling, which you can then use to your ability to get rid of the Arcane Initiate. One thing we talk about a lot on this channel in relation to Arcane Initiate and David Renfield, who we're going to get to, is that you want a plan for how to get rid of them. Luckily, Dexter can just cut them in half and turn them into a spell or a bottle of alcohol, right? So um, just something that's very nice with Dexter with cards notably like Arcane Initiate and uh, David Renfield. Um, next one here is Forbidden Knowledge. This one, it's uh, you can exhaust it and take a horror to move a secret from Forbidden Knowledge to your resource pool. So this counteracts both the weakness of the exp- uh, expensive on resource, but it also gives the benefit of being a zero cost card that you can discard to Dexter's ability once you've gotten like say three of the resources off of it. I think it's really nice here with Dexter, especially with a limited card pool. Um, Holy Rosary is a stable, gives you more brain and shriveling, as I said, is one of the fight spells. We talk about these in great detail in that video. We're not going to get into too much detail on those guys here. And then I'm going to pass these next core set cards, which are mostly staples, to Travis. Okay. Um, now Leo DeLuca is our first uh, card here. He is just the generic green ally that you kind of pick when you don't have anything else. Um, Dexter does have some better options for allies, most of the Arcane Initiate, and uh, a couple more as you get a bigger collection, but Lulu is still a fine choice. Uh, and that you can turn not an action into an extra action every turn, which is pretty cool. Uh, second card is Elusive. card is very good, saves you a whole bunch of actions, and it's just a good way to get a jam if you really need it. Drawn to the Flame is a solid, testless way to get clues from Mystics, who aren't really scared of the encounter deck. 
and war the protection is one of the reasons they aren't. Emergency cash provides you some of that sweet money you're going to need to play all your assets. And guts over power and unexpected courage are all here. Uh, overpower might seem like a little bit weird, but Dexter's three punch. While serviceable does need like a little bit of a boost, and uh, being able to have a card that cycles into a different card is pretty nice for him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Travis, I want to keep going just get these two because they're pretty similar too. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is Leo de, Luca, but he, Leo de Luca, but he costs one less, which is better. <laughs> And we've got a grotesque statue, which is a little pricey at 4 experience, but it is an asset with a limited amount of uses and a very strong ability. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just passing tests is really good, man. Yeah, and then also, like, you look at all of these assets, like grotesque statue, and just being able to get it out fast at the cost of one less resource makes, like, in- pushes the the want and desire and power of the card even further that's one thing that dexter does really well is he just kind of like takes these cards and makes them just that much juicier all right we're uh, we're done with the course yeah. oh sorry one thing one thing that i should bring up that i actually i, I didn't is that uh, his lightning bolt ability does require the card to have a different title yes uh i don't think about it until it hurts me <laughs> so <laughs> as far as i'm concerned it's not a part of the card but yeah, it, Bryn, it is. Bryn's looking at like a David it Renfield is. with six doom, and then the only yeah. other asset in his hand is David Renfield, and he's like, oh no. <laughs> what have I done? Yeah. Uh, Bryn, why don't you take us into Dunwich? All right, in Dunwich, we've got the ritual candles. Uh, these ones, they're a one costed asset, and they do a thing. They take up a hand slot, which is generally not a very contested slot. Probably looking at most of our valuable assets being either allies or spells, given you know what we're allowed to play. Mm-hmm. But uh, they're fairly strong and uh, minimal cost if you in- need to get rid of them for something different. Uh, they also come into play for free if you need to kill something like a David Renfield or a Arcane Initiate. So they got that going for them, which is nice. Uh, we've got the fine clothes. What sort of magician doesn't wear some sort of finery? Uh, are they good? Probably. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, they I, can. Play these in mo- I play these in a lot of my level zero decks, whether I think they're going to be good or not. Uh, one for a 1-1 one, one soak is not the worst thing that I could ever be doing. And reducing parlay actions. A lot of parlay actions are made with brain, and you can make these into a complete joke with, uh, with the fine clothes. We got the Lone Wolf. It's another, it's a just a economy auction. Option. Uh, it costs one. It's an asset. It's ticking all the boxes. And we got the Rite of Seeking. This is, you know, one of the spells. It lets you leverage that big brain number for a thing. Plus, has a limited number of uses, which is also like somewhat relevant to Dexter. Uh, yeah. Limited number of uses in exchange for more power. Yeah, and that is something as well that we didn't specify too, is that a lot of the times, uh, if you don't have a way to fill up your spells again, they kind of just sit there, and Dexter can just turn them into something else. Anything else, really. I, I also just love like how it like the non-resident uh, resonance, uh, where you can turn Lone Wolf, a talent, into <laughs> fine clothes. <laughs> but you know, we'll we'll not worry about that that part of it. Uh, we got Delve Too Deep, which allows you to draw uh, each investigator in player order draws an, uh, the top card of the encounter deck, and you get more victory. Uh, especially in the earlier campaigns, like where this card is from, victory was a lot less of a thing. So more victory was just always a good thing because it meant you could buy your stronger spells and all of that stuff. Um, quick thinking is a staple. Uh, it just gives you extra actions if you succeed by two or more, and it's a wild, so you're probably going to only commit this to the cards that, like, the tests that you can succeed by two to get that extra action, and it's just really good for that. Uh, we have the permanent blood pact. Uh, Dexter is a little bit uh, cool where he could make fine use out of the level zero blood pact because he can discard it when he's done with it. But the permanent blood blood pact is still just a great option for plus three f- fist or plus three brain. And Dexter has three fists, as Travis said. It needs a boost to get really good, and Blood Pack could potentially be that boost. We have the upgraded Rite of Seeking and Shriveling Spells. As I said, those are the spell staples you can find in our spell video, where we talk about those in greater detail than this. And then we got Relic Hunter and Charisma. Two fantastic permanents if you want to be playing accessories and allies. 
which with Dexter, like you probably would want depending on your build because it means more things that like you could if you wanted to do multiple allies, but you could also get away without doing that because you can just be recycling your things and turning them into new things. So, uh, but still always relevant for every investigator. Uh, I believe that is it for Dunwich. So we're gonna make our way to Paris for Carcosa. So Travis, why don't you take this slide? Okay. Um, first up, we got Sleight of Hand. This one is uh, real fancy for Dexter. He's got like all kinds of neat things he can do with it. Um, probably the best character to use it, wouldn't you say, Bryn? Maybe. Uh, there's a lot of cool things you can do with this in blue cards, but like Dex just gets to make use of it with his own card. So. Yeah, well, you can use it to put an yeah. item into play and then like that Colt weapon and then shoot it like three times and then just turn it into something different. Mm -hmm. If you'd like, or you can just pick it up again. Dexter I wants to play a big pile of assets, which Slave of Hand also wants. Lots of synergy going on there. Mm-hmm. My Cage of Soul is like the purple economy card. You're gonna, you want to play your spells and stuff. You can play them for three less, or you can have two more brains. David Renfield is like probably... Might be like the most essential card to a Dexter deck, to be honest. It's really hard to compete with all that money in the ally slot. Um, it gives you plus one brain, too, for... Like, it doesn't really matter for what he's in your deck to do. You just dump a bunch of Doom on game with big pile of resources, play all your assets for the rest of the game, then throw them away for something else. And then cut them in half. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, Torrent of Power is next. This one's kind of neat where you can use it for an important test to suck all of the charges off some garbage mystic card that you have. <laughs> And then throw it away for something else. Why am I put this in my desk deck? Let's take these charges and turn them into something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just think that's it. Um, <laughs> oh, we're, we're Spirit of Tame. This one's a nice uh, hand asset for Dexter that makes a little bit of use out of his uh, his three punch. Um, boosting up to five to take down, you know, like lower tier enemies. You don't want to necessarily spend like a shriveling charge or something like that on. Mm -hmm. And then also gives you boost to your spell char spell effects more protection yeah. level two is just very good it stops other people's bad things too they'll like you <laughs> thanks dexter yeah uh arcane issue level three is just better than the level zero one um you can put two horror on it instead of doom if you want to stick around for a while mm -hmm. uh and it has can soak two sandy which is nice um Basically the same thing. It's a luxury upgrade mm -hmm. after the the level zero one. I think Key of East is like it's a pretty good one. Yeah, pretty good. This one you don't want to like necessarily throw away. Yeah, Ever. because you will it will <laughs> leaving play is when it gets thrown away. So it's not like when it's defeated, it's just when it leaves play. Well also you just like wanna have it in play. Yeah, because yeah. it's so sick. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> no, it's, just, it's just pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's just pretty, pretty alright. It's a fine card. It's a good um, card, yeah. Yeah, sweet. Uh, one thing I, as well about I like about something like a Spirit of Tame <coughs> is that, uh, especially with Dexter 2, uh, Spirit of Tame is one of those cards that's like obviously like fine. Like the numbers on it are all good. But it becomes just like that much more exciting to play when you can get it in f cheaper and faster, right? Like... This is like something that we that that really I like about cards like this and like investigators like this is just when it turns cards that are already okay even even better value and then you're like look at all the value I'm just slowly accruing over time which leads to even more victory and winning's fun that's one thing we I hope we can all agree on <laughs> I like he does, he does also turn like a large pile of relatively unplayable direct yeah into like pretty okay cards. <laughs> All right, on to the Forgotten Age. Bryn, I'll throw these ones to you. All right, we got you handle this one. Uh, this one's in the Staples video. Uh, it's a little weird here because there aren't very many cards you're going to want to give away. Mm -hmm. But when you want to give them away, you really want to give them away. 
because you know who's got a, who's who on your team is going to have a bigger brain or a better time fighting monsters than you do. Uh, you can't see me, but I, I shrugged. Yeah, I was just like I was going to say, like Mark Herring does have a bigger brain, but he probably yeah. likes fighting monsters more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe uh, if it's like this... a small monster, you give it to Roland Banks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. Like it, it definitely has applications, but depending on your team comp, you know, mm-hmm. you might be you might be the best the one best suited to be drawing the drawing the cards. Maybe not. Uh, miss, we got the Mists of Railar. This is a way to make our take our big stupid brain score, make it do a thing. Got two versions. The upgraded one does the same thing as the first, only like a bit better as most spells are wont to do. Mm-hmm. The Lucky Cigarette Case, it's cards. Car- <laughs> cards good. Cards good. <laughs> yeah, often actually like the gate to uh, to decks is how many cards you can have in your hand. Mm-hmm. Because uh, yeah. if you're throwing away, away all your stuff to make new stuff, you need more stuff. Mm-hmm. Got the Arcane Research. Cheaper spells, good. Sacrifice. This is just kind of like a different flavor on the thing you already want to do. Yeah. <laughs> just like a different payoff. You know, the payoff here instead is getting money or cards or any combination thereof. Kind of just what, good. Is that what Dex is doing when he does his magic trick? Yeah, yeah, he's just killing people. Oh my god. <laughs> you know. Don't worry about it. Uh, Shards of the Void. This one's just a... It's a different flavor of shriveling. Uh, is it better? Maybe. Is it worse? Also, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it depends entirely on the difficulty you're playing on. And, uh... Yeah. Yeah, there's not really too much else to say about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, got the backpack. It's an asset. It's cheap. It finds more asset. It's it, these are all things you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, and for new players, uh, because backpack, you treat the cards as if they were in your hand. You can use Dexter's ability to put them into play <laughs> from the backpack because they are in your hand for all intents and purposes. Except yeah, not really. Yeah. You get to pretend like they are. Yeah, but only when you he, want to. Only yeah. when you're playing them. Only when it's advantageous to you to do so. Yeah. All right. Is this circle undone? Oh my gosh, it is. Okay, we got Sign Magic. It's a fast spell, which is like already kind of exciting. Um, and you have an additional arcane slot, which can only be used to hold a spell or ritual asset, which means you probably don't. I mean, you could turn this into something else, but you also could just keep it in play to get a bunch of spells and rituals going and just be the uh, Sorcerer Supreme version of Dexter. That sounds kind of fun. Um, we have the Tennessee Sour Mash, which. It admittedly does look a little bit strange in decks, but it actually has a a good variety of uses. Number one, you know, Guts is good. This is Guts on a card. Uh, It also, you can use it to fight, which is also, as we said, doesn't need a... Like, it needs a little bit of a boost, but not a crazy boost to get it going. And you also could just put this in fast or drink a little bit and then turn it into something else. Uh, Yeah, you ever wanted to give the the middle finger to the treachery cards that you're drawing because mm-hmm. seven brain might let you do that yeah uh we have the enchanted blade this is the uh, uh weapon choice uh you can attack for uh five which as travis said is good for enemies this is also really nice because you don't need to use the charge you could just attack at um four which is good for killing like smaller enemies the lower tier enemies as travis said that you don't want to use a shriveling charge on uh so particularly relevant there it does take up a spell slot so just be aware of that but heck maybe you have a sign magic for that as well you always could then we got prophecy which is just a very quiet but like very applicable skill card that's just gonna like do well this is a card that i know travis puts in a lot of his mystic decks just because like doom just naturally appears in the game and especially later on when like something like this can be really clutch there's probably gonna be six doom in play um, also as well, if you're playing a Doom-based Dexter, Prophesy becomes even better there as well. 
Uh, Travis, some more Circle and Dunk cards. I'll pass to you. Cool. Big pile of assets here. We got Wither, um, which is a chargeless fight spell, which is nice. Um, good for, again, pinging off those Garbo enemies that aren't worth actually spending a charge on. An upgrade Wither, which is the same thing, but a little bit better. Deny Existence is a Mystic Staple that lets you just ignore something, which is very good. <laughs> yeah. Six Sense is our clue counterpart to the Wither. A um, little bit stronger, though, because getting one clue is better than dealing one damage. And, of course, the upgrade is Six Sense, which will conditionally get you multiple clues. Or let you just cheese clues off a high shroud location. Um, Four of Cups, very simple... Uh, asset just gives you plus one brain. You know, six is bigger than five. We've got our level three purple enchant blade here, which is a pretty solid weapon. Uh, not many characters can use it very efficiently, but Dexter is primed to, where he can, you know, just dump all the charges into a big attack or two and then uh, cycle away for something different. And last, we have Divermus Mysterious, which is a item Tome takes the hand slot. Let's you re reuse spells and insight events from your discard pile, which you kind of have to build around this specifically if you're going to play it. Mm -hmm. um, because you need a big pile of spells and events to make it worth it, or spells and insights to make it worth it. But Dexter is very good at getting rid of it once you stacked up all the Doom. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Moving on to the Dream Eaters. Oh, haste. <laughs> Brim, why did you take this one? All right, we got Open Gate. This guy is myriad and fast, and you get to have three of them in your deck, and you can only play it during your own turn because it would be a little weird if you could play it outside of your turn, but also wouldn't really do anything. Like, not different, really. Uh, but the investigators may move between any two locations that have an Open Gate attached to them, as if they were connected. It's a neat little trick. Uh, gets a lot better the more you know the scenarios you're playing mm -hmm. uh, because obviously you'll know the places you might have to go back to or the places that might be difficult to get out of. Gets even better if you can convince one of your teammates to also play Open Gate <laughs> if you have access to more than one collection. Yeah, as long as they don't start siding them out immediately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now we got the Scroll of Prophecies. This is one of the better ways in purple to draw cards at level zero. Which is a big part of Dexter's issue is that uh, once you've got the once you've got the money thing sorted out, you gotta make sure that you keep churn you keep 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 keeping more cards to churn through, because otherwise you can't do the thing. Uh, it has four secrets and uh, obviously when you're out it's just something different. Tear the scroll turns into a book. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. You frick? tear the scroll. David Renfield comes out of it, and you're like, "I thought I killed you." <laughs> All right, we got Spectral Razor. This one's a staple. Uh, we got five brain and three punch. Eight's a big number. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Read the signs. Same thing. Only this time, seven is a big number. It's not quite as big of a number, but it's pretty big. Mm -hmm. And then Easy Mark. This one is a one experienced myriad card, so you only have to pay one experience to get all three of them. Uh, the effect is gain two resources, draw a card. It's like an emergency cash, only as a reaction effect, after you play Easy Mark, you can play another Easy Mark from your hand at no cost. Uh, which you could then do again if you have the third one. It's kind of cool. Even if you don't get to play any extra ones off of it, it's still a very solid economy card. And then we got haste. You know the rules about what happens if you're in the artwork of a card. <laughs> uh, this one is, uh, it, it does take up an arcane slot, and you can only have one of them in play. But as a reaction effect, after you perform the same type of action twice in a row, you can exhaust it to take another action of that type. Uh, so this really helps you play in big turns with, you know, like maybe your shrivelings or actually any kind of item because activate actions uh, are very common across assets mm -hmm. and it is likely not going to be difficult for you to find a turn where you want to spend you know three or four actions 
using your the assets that you put into play. Mm-hmm. This will let you do that. It's like Leo, but it costs three. And doesn't take up your ally. It takes up a different uh, different slot. Mm-hmm. Man, that art is just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> It, it kind of is, though. It's, it's something else. Like, it's, it's not bad art by no means, but it's just, it's wild. Somehow I always time it so I get Innsmouth, uh, which is good, because I have to say, for a detailed breakdown of the Bless and Curse cards, check the video description for a link to the relevant archetype guide, because there's a lot of Blessed and Curse cards, and obviously uh, Dexter can kind of touch into both of them. Uh, one thing as well is that Dexter can take a lot of advantage. Uh, both Bryn and I have built a Dexter deck where, like, you're taking advantage of the curse tokens. And stuff like uh, Riastrad is, like, really nice there. Faustian Bargain, as we were saying earlier, stops the resource problem. And then there's also the card Priest of Two Faiths, which I just wanted to give a special shout-out to. I love this card in Dexter because it has value when it enters play. It can soak for a Mythos phase, and then next turn you can just, like, turn it into something else. Or keep it around for a bit, if you're playing for the Curse Tokens. But still just, like, a one-cost item that you're probably playing quickly with your ability that adds three Blessed Tokens kind of is kind of good. <laughs> um, and uh, if you're playing Curse, as I said, you can just take advantage of that as well. Uh, some other notable cards, you got Obsucation. He's in the art, yo. <laughs> He's in the art. We don't make the rules, we just follow them. It is fast, which is something that uh, we said is very relevant here. Uh, and when an enemy makes an attack of opportunity, you can spend a charge to cancel that attack. When it's empty, turn it into something else. Easy. Sword Cane is Dexter's magic sword cane. Uh, it does not provoke attacks of, attacks of opportunity to play, but you're probably going to put it in for free, but still. Uh, and after it enters play, you can immediately trigger its action ability without paying its cost, which is action, exhaust, sword cane, fight, or evade. You may use your brain instead of your fist or your foot for this uh, attack or evasion attempt. And uh, as Bryn has pointed out to me, uh, which I learned through him, is that the exhaust is part of the cost because it comes before the colon, uh, which means that you get to get one free non-exhaust, non-action fight evade out of this. This is particularly good also with showmanship because you can like whack and then evade or evade and evade. Uh, just a nice card with Dexter. And then when you're done with it, you can turn it into something else. If you have another one in your hand that you're gonna play again later. It also happens to be a relic, so, you know, if you need to beat any pesky poltergeists to death. Yes, that is true. That uh, is true. Uh, Abyssal Tome, which uh, allows you to fight. You may use either your book or your brain for this attack. I think you know which one you want to choose, but I'm going to say brain, just in case. When you initiate this attack, you may place one Doom on Abyssal Tome. You get a plus one skill value and deal plus one damage for this attack for each Doom on it. Uh, you can have three Doom on it, and then when you're done with it, because there's too much Doom on it, close that book, turn it into a Priest of Two Faiths or something else. I'm, I'm not your dad. You can decide what you want to put in your deck to replace with Abyssal Tome, but it works well there. <laughs> and then we have the 25 Automatic, which uh, admittedly might look a little strange, but um, Dexter does have good fist. This gets there, and then with stuff like Mists of Rilla and Sword Cane, you have a good variety of options when it comes to evading enemies as well. All right, that's it for Innsmouth. It's cold in here. Travis, here are a few Edge of the Earth cards for you to talk about. Sure. Um, first up, we got two levels of permanence, Down the Rabbit Hole and the World Sport. Down the Rabbit Hole is just a good way to bank some experience, um, depending on what kind of things you're putting into your deck. Oral support makes for a neat 25 card deck, but you're only allowed to have one copy of each non-weakness, non-signature card by title. So basically one of each card, um, which, well, it might not be the optimal way to play Dexter, I imagine is very fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, yeah, you don't be... even have to think about how his ability can't put things into play that have the same title. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> if you like Brandon's struggle with that, this is your solution. Easy. Right. Brent's like, I've cracked it. <laughs> oh my god, it's all falling into place. Yeah. Um, Hit Me is just like, it, it, it's like Lucky, kind of. You know? Yeah. That doesn't always work, but sometimes also digs you out of a bigger hole than you should have been able to. If you're playing the Curse Bless archetype, you can also throw it to try to hit more Curse or, and or Bless tokens. Yep. 
yeah. on your test. Mm -hmm. Kind of neat. That's true. Yeah. We have Untimely Transaction, which lets you... Basically, you can let another player play one of the items from your hand, which... Again, I'm not actually sure how good that is, but you play a lot of items, and you can you can play a lot of niche items. Maybe someone else can make better use of that liquid courage than you can, for yeah. example. Hey, Bob, do you want to buy this Vermis Mysterious? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Nice. Yeah, thanks for asking, though. Uh, Bryn, keep this one going. Oh, man. So, Ethereal Slip, that's probably Dexter in the art. He's got, got a top hat. He's wearing, he's wearing a suit jacket. I'm, I'm convinced. Dude, you know, I just the realized so there's I. like, it's like Biaki wings or something. And there's like a <laughs> Biaki above his head. I just realized that. <laughs> yeah, uh, this one, this one's, uh, it does a pretty solid uh, elusive impersonation. Uh, only it's also a spell. So you can find it with your arcane initiates. Uh, you get to choose a non-elite enemy at a revealed location up to two locations away and you swap places with that enemy and you get to say now for my next trick uh, or have to say however you choose to view that <laughs> the upgraded one is the same thing only a cost one and uh commits for an extra foot symbol and it can just be anywhere as long as the location is revealed uh, you know just kind of neat yeah, I, I'm still. Pl I, I think I think Ethereal mm -hmm. Slip and they're 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 fine cards, and I still have been putting the Ethereal Slip two in a lot of my decks just because I'm dreaming of that moment where I'm like, I just absolutely wrecked the game. Still hasn't happened, but uh, <laughs> one day yeah. it will. That's the hope, can, anyway. Color me surprised. You, <laughs> can you imagine the turn where you get to play Ethereal Slip, Travis dead in the eye, and say, "Now for my next trick." Watch this. <laughs> uh, on that note, uh, with with that in mind, like the level two version, I think is really nice. It, there's a lot of like utility that like the level two version is mostly just like exciting text that's like not going to manifest. So sticking with the level zero one, if you like the effect, is probably going to do the job for you. Yeah. Have yeah, we got the red clock, version. which is a. Uh, Feels a bit of a weird niche here where this is like kind of just a powerful item and you probably don't want to discard it much like the key of ease. Uh, it has uses, but don't let that fool you. That's only so you can keep track of what stage it's on. Because uh, on stage one, you get plus like three skill value for your, for your next skill test. And on stage two, you get to move twice. And on stage three, you get to take an extra action. And then on stage four, which is like technically a non-stage or stage zero however you choose to view that you get to gain three money mm -hmm. uh, so you kind of just want to sit this one in play and let it do its thing however it, because it's an asset you can also play it for one and fast if you've got something that you don't need anymore or you draw it late mm how -hmm. uh, you got winds of power this is a way to recharge assets you, for two money you get to place two charges on an asset you control and if you draw it during your turn you get to play it for free got grounded it's a zero costed asset it's fast it soaks two and two you must put damage on it before you put it on your investigator card however if you have other assets that can soak damage you can choose to place it on them first uh, you get plus one skill value during skill tests on spell cards you're probably doing that a lot uh -huh, uh -huh. what you do uh, and uh, yeah, as a lightning bolt, you can spend one of your resources during a test on a skill test on a spell card to get plus one to the skill test. This one's like extra neat because if you're ever in danger of having to throw it away to something stupid, you can just turn it into something else. Mm -hmm. Like, no problem. And it's an unexpected courage. So, kind of just all around cool. Oh, we got Blur level 1 and level 4. These are in the spell video. They take your brain and make it do thing. <laughs> uh, you know, just the way it is. We got the Enchanted Bow. This is another way to take your brain and make it do thing, but like different thing. Uh, in this case, it is Fight. And you can use this one for 
ever, I think, as yeah. long as you never spend the because the charges are only spent if you choose. You can choose to spend charges to fight enemies that are a location away from you. Yep. Uh, but if you don't spend the charges, you can just keep using it to fight with brain at plus one damage. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. like plus one brain, and that's not a, that's not a bad place. It does cost you a ton of slots. Yeah, it does cost you a ton of slots. And that may be an issue, but mm -hmm. depending on how you build your deck, it also may not. Mm -hmm. Sick. Oh, ooh, we got a bunch of spells here. Uh, so I'm going to just jump to Divination and Brand of Cthulga. These, uh, as Bryn has been saying, they turn your brain into something else, clue-getting and fighting, respectively. Uh, they have the same kind of thing where you only spend the charges on success, and if you succeed by zero, you choose and discard two cards from your hand for the Divination, and you lose actions for... So discard cards for the Divination, losing actions for the Brand of Cthulga. We talk about them in greater detail in our spell video. Um, we have the Cyclopean Hammer. Surprise, surprise, busted weapon continues to remain busted. Um, with Dexter, this attacks for 8 without any other modifiers, which is a really good number. And uh, as soon as you start getting modifiers in there, who oh boy, who oh boy. Uh, also, it feels nice to play this card fast, and less like the ultimate trick is... And you draw an enemy, and the enemy's like, I got you now, Dexter. And then he's like, turns like this. Uh, he grabs the ritual candle. He just extends it, twists the top, and just hits the guy away with a hammer. It's a pretty good mental image and entirely possible in Dexter Drake. Uh, last thing here is we got the Earthly Serenities 1 and 2. Uh, sorry, 1 and 4. They both cost 2. They, these are like really like pretty solid, uh, dare we even say, like, great healing spells uh if you need healing they're like they're, they're very good uh you test brain one or zero for the level one and level four version for each point you succeed by you may spend one charge to heal one damage or one horror from an investigator location uh, and if you succeed by zero you lose resources which like kind of sucks but also it's like one of the so it's so soft you're like oh okay um, and there's just so much healing impact in, it, impact in this card, which is why it's so much better. Good card. All right, Travis, we're on to the return twos. Go for it. Okay. Um, first up, we got our level two option for Rise of Seeking, which I believe doesn't give you... Or no, it does give you a boost, but you get two clues instead of three. That's right. Mm -hmm. With the same downside that if you draw a simple token, you lose the rest of your turn. Um, just a solid option for getting clues. In the same vein, just below, we have the level 2 Miss Avrela. Just a solid option. Like, medium option for uh, evasion for Dexter. Mm -hmm. Back up top, we got Suggestion. This one is an asset that uses charges that lets you add your brain in addition to your foot for your skill test. Um... And then can, like, theoretically evade forever. Forever. Just to its right, we have the Alchemical Transmutation. Level 0, which is a surprisingly good economy card. For Dexter in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, comes with four charges. This is, this is where you get your charges for Torrent of Souls from. <laughs> Torrent of Power. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they can also be resources. Yeah, it comes playing, uh, good. It's also kind of neat if you're playing the succeed any of the succeed by X green cards, because mm -hmm. you get to run oh, yeah. zero test with your big number. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also kind of handy with this like sign magic that we have down there. I'll talk get to it in a second. Mm -hmm. um, backpack level two is a really good way of not just drawing cards, but drawing the cards that you need. Um, the hierophant five is a tarot slot that gives you an additional arcane slot, more room for your spells if you have one that you actually want to keep around. And, uh... Or, alternatively, it can be more accessory slots. You got the sign magic I mentioned, where you have an additional arcane slot, which can only be used to hold a spell or ritual asset. And then, after you activate the action ability on a spell or ritual asset, you can exhaust sign magic to activate another action ability on a different spell or ritual you control. So you could like fight something there, get clues, and just like slap an alchemical transmutation onto that and get some free resources or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and it's also a fast asset, which is something Dexter always loves to see. 
in the last of Us page, we have the Fool. Just, it's not the best. It's not as good of a comic card as it looks in general, but it's pretty good for Dexter considering how much you, how much, how many times you actually play an asset during the game. It's yeah. it's most of them. And I'll save quite a few resources over the course of the game with this. All right, on to the investigator decks, Bryn. Oh, this is, you're going to get another slide after that. This one's all staples. <laughs> Easy. All right, we've got the Mauser C96s. They're weapons. They're real good. They give you that clutch plus two to make your fight number not three. Oh. Then damage. We've got the Azure Flames. They're ways to take your brain and make it do damage to enemies. And the Clairvoyances. They're... A different way to take your brain and make it get clues. Man. There are yeah, varying levels of them. The mid level for most of these uh, the clue spells that require charges gets you two instead of the three that the final stage can get. But depending on your player count, it might be best just to stop. Yes. Yeah. At the mid tier one, like if you're only playing with two people. You're probably you're, there's going to be very few locations that have more than two clues on them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Brendan, what if I want to use my brain to evade things? What if I want another option for that? Ooh, uh, give me a second. <laughs> okay, Travis, can you wait truth? four cards until we tell you? Yeah. <laughs> Let's. We can. We can do. We can deal Why with the it hell right are now. Are these together, Justin? <laughs> uh, I followed the order in that you write them on the thing. I don't think ahead. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, like a monkey. We got. The, we do have these ineffable truths. They're, uh, like Travis was saying, a different option to take your brain and use it to evade enemies. Uh, which one is best? I'm not here to tell you that. Uh, you're going to have to figure that one out on your own. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm being an asshole and I don't want to tell you. Uh, but because, like, it's real hard. Mm -hmm. Bryn doesn't know. He doesn't play with her. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't, yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a side note with ineffable I mean we talked about this in the video but as to what I was just saying Travis in one of your extended guides if you especially when we get to the investigator decks you could put in like any card and there is like probably a 25% chance it slips through the cracks <laughs> <laughs> especially yeah. when we get to this part of when I'm making the slides because I'm just like a zombie at that point I'm like move image paste image move I'll just image. start putting garbage in <laughs> from edge of the earth because it's multicolored anyway yeah <laughs> We get uh, two different versions of Robe of Endless Night. Uh, there is a reaction effect when you play a spell. You can exhaust it to reduce the cost of that card by one. It also soaks two heart damage. Uh, the upgraded one costs one less and allows you to ignore attacks of opportunity, which you probably already are by doing magic. Uh, but it costs one less. So magic. that's kind of a win. If Leo DeLuca has taught me anything, <laughs> it's that trading XP for resource cost is mostly not worth it. Uh, we got the grotesque statue. This version costs three and only has three charges, but otherwise is the same card. Uh, so if you wanted the other one, you could buy two of these instead. <laughs> uh, it's a distinct possibility. We got the level four arcane studies. You might have noticed that the other ones aren't on here, and that's because you don't want them. This one, though, you might. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad you noticed, Brent. Justin, Justin's laughing, but I'm I'm speaking the truth. No, no, I just I expect that from Travis. I don't expect that from you. <laughs> uh, so the, the that's the book, bad there, Justin. The book bump is like mostly useless to you. Although you might be able to mise a clue or two off of a location if that's what needs to be done right now. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly what this card does is once per round, you get plus either plus one to your brain twice or you know, plus two to your brain once. Mm -hmm. uh, it also commits for some six symbols if you don't have time to play it, but let's be real, your decks, you always have time to play whatever you want. It's not going to be a problem. It's the thing you the, it's, yeah, it's, it's just the thing you do. It's just the thing you do. Uh, we got the Liquid Courage level one. Uh, there is also a level zero version. Uh, 
And uh, again, like which one is better? Uh, it's tough to say. It depends whether you value the whole, like it heals horror and then on, su on success of the brain two test, it'll heal an extra one. And on failure, you discard a random card. Uh, this one is you spend the supply, test brain two, heal a horror. If you succeed the test, then you draw a card. And if you fail the test, you heal the extra horror and discard an extra card. So they're just kind of different. Um, this one is really good if you're not so concerned with the horror healing aspect and you kind of just want a way to, you know, grab a couple of extra points every now and then. Mm -hmm. Whereas the other one is much better if what you're trying to do is play a really big shriveling, like the biggest one, and not explode to it. Yeah. Not drive yourself mad. Mm -hmm. Sweet. All right, that's it for Dexter. Travis, what about this little deck yeah. you made for this? Yeah, sure. This is like the most basic and boring Dexter deck you could ever imagine. <laughs> but it'll work good, I bet. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, like <sighs> we got Sword Cane, Mist of Railroad Seeking, Shriveling to actually do things. Um, Scroll Secrets is like our little uh, that one and where is it? Yeah, the Forbidden Knowledge are like our little throwaway things. Mm -hmm. Um to play our other assets when we need them. Lucky cigarette case draws us cards because we've got lots of brain. We're gonna pass. Tastes good. Arcane initiate gives us cards to play. David Renfield gives us money to play them with. Um, the blood package is me boosts if that's something we're interested in. And liquid courage is just a nice utility asset. Um, we got two arcane researches here because you gotta upgrade all those spells. Um, and then the skills are just like and the events are just like the really good ones yeah they are literally just <laughs> the good ones <laughs> like the really good ones <laughs> yeah, i told you it's uh yeah. it's not exciting it's not fancy but it's good i mean you show me like i'll be real you show me like a, a level zero mystic deck that's exciting and it's probably bad because it's not playing the stuff that mystics play at level zero like, look at my level zero <laughs> Sled Dog Mystic decks. I'd be like, oh, good. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> sled Dog decks, Bryn? <laughs> Turn David Redfield into a dog? Is this possible? Question mark? I have officially, uh, this is, um, before I say thank you to our patrons and sign out the video, I did officially change all of the branding and in the thumbnails and descriptions for the live deck building series into Bryn's Madhouse. So, uh, <laughs> it's, uh... Oh, tell, tell me you used the, Im the image of the witch house from Arkham Second. Oh, I should, I should, I should. Um, huge thank you to all of our patrons, the Acolytes, the Wizards of the Order, the Knights of the Inner Circle for supporting the channel. Uh, it means the world to me. Uh, if you want to support the channel, go to the Patreon down below. You'll find a bunch of exclusive videos and more, depending on your pledge levels. Uh, next uh, expanded guide is going to be Kelvin Wright. Are you excited for us to talk about soak <laughs> for the next uh, for 50 minutes? So This card stops you from dying. <laughs> Kelvin Wright. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with another video and in two weeks with another expanded guide. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.